Hey everybody, um, I am deciding to kind of restart my YouTube channel after a long time and my brother sort of inspired me by having, uh, he's been putting a bunch of videos about mostly the local music scene in Seattle, um, especially his experiences with Nirvana. He had a lot more than I did, of course. Um, I left out for college in 87, but pretty much from the early 80s until about 87, I was in the scene pretty heavily. So I thought today I would just start by uh, kind of linking into some of the things he's been talking about. Um, mainly he's been talking about some demo tapes that Kurt gave him. So when I left to college in fall of 87, um, that there hadn't been any demo tapes that I'm aware of out really yet. But right after I got to college, um, the my brother sent off some demo tape, a demo tape to me, uh, which I immediately played to death and really loved. By the way, my son is the cameraman today. He's got his own YouTube channel. We'll talk about that on some other episodes. And so he's doing his best to film it. <laughs> so anyway. I did find a couple tapes. The one I think that he sent me first is this one. And if you want to come in a little closer, Andrew, is it? you can see this. It's just a plain tape. It says Nirvana. It says Nirvana B. Um, I believe that's written by my brother. Uh, once again, he can give you updates on that. And then another demo they did. This is, I believe, the one... Um, that led to Bleach. So this, I think, might have been the second demo he recorded. And if you come here closer, you can see it says, Happy B-Day, Nirvana. And this is my brother wrote, made this to me. And he put on here, um, the songs that are on here from Nirvana were About a Girl, Blue, Scoff, Swap Meet, School, Big Long Now, Sifting, and Negative Creep. Uh, this also included Machine, which was his band, and Subvert, which was also his band. So this was a really cool little thing to get. Once again, I was in the college dorms and I was playing this for people. A lot of them were saying like, oh, it's really rough, you know, terrible production. It's really, that'll never make it. And I was trying to tell everybody how awesome this band was. And they were all listening to Rush and they were listening to, what was really big at the time, it was like The Cult. and. The Cure and Depeche Mode and all these other bands and um, eventually, of course, Nirvana hit pretty big. Uh, the only other thing I was going to show you on this one, and then later I'll get into more specific stories, is a lot of books have talked about one of the first shows that Nirvana played, uh, paying shows that they played, was at the Community World Theater. And this is a flyer that I made for that show. This is actually a, a reproduction of that flyer. Uh, but if you look at this, uh, we drew this because my band was Soylent Green at the time, so of course we made ourselves the biggest. I think that night we actually might have been headlining. Um, and that was at the Community World Theater. You can see it was on April 18th, and I believe that was uh, April of 87. Once again, you might know if I'm wrong. And it was $3, but nope, it ended up being three fifty. so that was kind of interesting. <laughs> and the other bands, so Skid Row, that was Nirvana. Uh, Skid Row was one of their many names that they came up with. Uh, Yellow Snow, I don't know if Yellow Snow actually ended up playing that night. And the Squally Delta Podunk Nightmare, which featured, uh, I think might have been the first band that Slim Moon played in. And Slim Moon later went on to fame um, with uh, Kill Rock Stars Records. And uh, I have a lot of stories with Slim Moon. Uh, we used to hang out quite a bit, and in fact, he did some spoken word stuff with us on stage uh, when I was in an earlier band called The Grind. So anyway, uh, hopefully you guys find this stuff interesting. Um, I just kind of wanted to kick it off with that. Uh, I will, as I think of things, I'll make short little videos. Obviously, I would love to get subscribers. I would love to get comments or questions. If anyone had questions about the early punk underground indie scene in the Seattle area or Northwest, especially between early 80s to the mid-late 80s. Um, I'm definitely going to have a lot of stories and I could probably uh, bring up some stuff. And other things I might put on this channel are, I might put other music that's really cool. Oh, there's my kid. He's coming into it. 
Uh, <laughs> and who knows what else, whatever it comes up. Thanks guys. Bye.